member of the this podcast is a proud member of the tech podcast network if it's tech it's here listen to other great tech podcasts at www.techpodcasts.com yo you are in the right place at the right time listening to the right thing tech webcast Congratulations on choosing such an awesome thing to listen to. You are clearly very smart. You're into tech stuff. You love hearing Brad and Jason and their guests chat. And you're probably really good looking too. Well done. So let's get into it. The weekly tech extravaganza that is Tech Webcast in three. Welcome to episode 232 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 30th of March, 2013. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday and rebroadcast on Aussie Tech Heads on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. And don't forget to rate us on iTunes. Today's guest is Keith Tier of Just Me, Just Dot Me, and joining him are your hosts Jody, Steve, Jacob, Sarah, Brad, Andrew, and myself, Billy. Yes, indeed. Hello, Billy. Howdy. Howdy, mate. How are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Going good, mate. Um, Andrew. What's up? Is he not there? Or is he gone again? <laughs> wow. Is he gone? Probably flushing the toilet or doing the laundry. <laughs> uh, that is Jody. Hey, Jody. Hey, hi, Brad. How you doing? Good, Matt. Uh, Steve, what's up? Oh, pretty good. Yourself? Pretty good. Pretty good. New TV, mate. Yeah, awesome TV. <laughs> <laughs> We're having audio problems. We are. Um, also, we got uh, Sarah on for the first time. Welcome, Sarah, to the podcast. Hi, Brad. Thank you very much. Have you been on a podcast before? No, this is my first time. Oh, good stuff. Um, also, we've got Jacob on. Hey, Jacob. Hey, Brad. What's up? What's up, buddy? Ah, uh, nothing. What's... You sent me a message. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. The market. Um, Andrew's here. Hey, Andrew. Uh, meet your mic, mate. What happened to Andrew? I don't know, mate. He said he's he's here, but he's apparently his, his mic was muted. Um, oh. Also, we audio have, difficulties. Yeah. Also, we, we got uh, Keith T here. Hey, Keith. Hey, how you doing? How are you, mate? <clears throat> I'm great. I'm great. And good to have you on. Um, we're going to talk some tech news in a minute, um, and um, we'll have to get your views on them stories as well, Keith. Um, Steve, tell us about this new TV you got before we start in the news. Okay. Um, well, of course, uh, there's a lot of people know I've got a 42-inch Sony CRT television. Uh, it's uh, met its better days. Uh, most of the time, I can't even get it started now. So I went out, got a new Vizio 42-inch uh, LCD smart TV, hooked it up. Uh, I've got uh, my st uh, surround sound DVD player uh, along with my Mac Mini uh, Media Center. So uh, I'm really enjoying my... Stuff movies and television series cool cool welcome well, to the 90s. <laughs> the 90s i'm working my way up <laughs> the 90s don't don't You're be a really hater <laughs> it's a good thing it's not the 70s truly truly and uh jacob you got an ipad mini too didn't you mate during the week yes i did tell the people about it well, I love it because, well, it's bigger than I my want iPad. An iPad. You do? I do. All right, keep going, Jacob. <clears throat> yeah, I like it because the screen's bigger. Mm -hmm. My iPad Mini, I would have to strain to sometimes to look at something. Yeah, yeah because some of the, um, like when you look at Facebook, it's so shrunken but with the uh, um you may need glasses jacob that's probably why you can't see <laughs> hey on the ipad i love it well i can see fine it's crisp yeah it's crystal clear <clears throat> yep it's cri crystal, crystal clear and all that stuff all right um is andrew back i think i am back how are you brad how are you buddy Good, mate. Good. A few little audio difficulties at this end, but we are good to go. Hooray. Um, where have you been for the past two weeks? 
That's a good question. Uh, two weeks ago, I was at the Melbourne Formula One Grand Prix, so I took a, oh. a leave of absence, which was a whole lot of fun, actually, and um, took my wife out there for the first time, and she, she quite enjoyed herself, which was pretty good. And then last week, I was in Adelaide uh, for a game of football, and my wife happened huh? to fall over and hurt her ankle pretty badly, so I've had a week at the doctors and, you know, in the emergency on the weekend last week and so forth. So I actually took my laptop down, all ready to go, ready to be involved in the show on the Saturday. And, you know, as, as Brad can attest, I was sort of sending him messages at midday that mm. you know, can't do a show from the emergency room at the hospital. So that, that's that, how life is. That would have been pretty cool, though, doing a show from the emergency room. <laughs> yeah, probably would have been pretty cool, but I, I didn't think I'd try that on for size with, um, with my wife, Christy, so she probably would have wanted my attention. Good stuff. Now, Keith, have you ever been, you ever, you ever been to Australia before? Have I been where before? To Australia? Yeah. I have never been to Australia, funnily enough, but my, my head of designer, Just Me, lives in Melbourne. Oh, really? Cool. Hmm. He's Russian, though. <laughs> 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 okay. That's cool. That's good stuff. Um, and my sister-in-law lives in Melbourne. She's South African. Wow. That's cool. You're from the, you, I take it you're from the UK, Keith? I am. I'm from a small northern town called Scarborough. Oh, nice. That's good. Do you ever watch Coronation Street? You know, I've probably watched it three million times in my life, but not for the last 65 years. What about neighbors? Do you like neighbors? <laughs> I guess neighbors. that's where the Scarborough Fair is named after, huh? That's right. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Pass these stories. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm lying. It's, it's named after Scarborough in Canada, actually, that, one, that song. Oh, is it? Wow. All right. Um, Bill, let's get into some news, mate, before we get into the chat with Keith. Sure thing. Here are your tech headlines. Go ahead. Facebook developers can... What's that? That's, 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 oh. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Facebook developers can now target mobile app ads to Wi-Fi users in specific OS versions, and not just iOS versus Android, but also say iOS 6 for apps that have features that use the full capabilities of the system. And that's not all Facebook's been up to, as they have invited members of the press to an Android-related event on April 4th, where we may see the debut of the long-rumored Facebook phone. Google Glass, what's being called an advanced head-mounted computing project, is reportedly going to be assembled in the U.S., but will use components supplied by partners in Asia. And speaking of Asia, Apple's in court in China again, this time defending against a claim by Zen, Zizen Technology Co. over a patent over voice recognition software used in its XOI robot software that was patented back in 2004. Siri Inc. was founded in 2007 and acquired by Apple in 2010. And other Apple news, Digitimes is reporting that Apple is cutting its shipments of the iPad mini in the second quarter of 2013. The cut is said to be 20% with steeper cuts to potentially follow. As to why, that's harder to say. It could be to adjust for demand and product transitions as the rumors of the next iPad mini are floating about. And it sounds like Apple's iRadio is coming. The Verge reports multiple music industry insiders have said that there is significant progress in the talks with Universal and Warner. And there's no doubt about it anymore. It sounds like Apple is pushing for a summer launch. Meantime, a boxy TV firmware update adds Voodoo, 3D content, and DNLA streaming, also included our on-device DVR management. And next time you receive an email at work that includes images of kittens, you may want to think twice about opening it. The Wall Street Journal reports that companies are emulating fake phishing attacks by training in, uh, to train employees about risks of opening email attachments. Claims are 3.8 million employees have been taught how to avoid cyber attacks, often with the use of kittens. <laughs> and last but not least, it looks like we may have found Tatooine in real life. French astronomers think they have found the fictional home of Luke Skywalker. It revolves around two suns that move relatively close together. Basically, this is a planet in the binary star system, just like Tatooine. The catch? Astronomers are currently unsure if this even fits the definition of a planet. It's so big that it's 12 to 12, 14 times the size of Jupiter, which may indicate that it's actually a brown dwarf or a failed star. And those are your tech headlines. Well, good news. There is, uh, and, um, Billy? Thank you. Uh, Andrew, what, what's your view on them stories, first of all? Um, some, yeah, some pretty interesting stories this week. I think Facebook targeting uh, Wi-Fi users and OS versions, I think it's great. I think it makes a whole lot of sense, really. We, you know, there's a few times I've seen apps and things like that come through, and I've clicked on it, and you know, I'm one version back, so it can't install. And it, it makes a whole lot of sense for the advertiser and also, obviously, the, the consumer itself. And you know, Apple are always in the news. I won't go into anything you know, too high tech about what they're up to, but the, the iPad mini sounds like that's 
coming soon, which will be good, the new one, and yep. obviously the new phone coming soon. So hopefully they can really keep up with um, what Android and, and Google are up to lately. What's your view on the uh, Android uh, announcement of Facebook, Android, about that Android thing with Facebook? Um, look, I think it's probably – it's it's hard to say because, look, I, I knew the announcement – was was coming obviously i i'd heard that there was an announcement but i don't really know what it's actually about um so it's hard to say i guess next week we'll probably know a bit more yeah definitely definitely um what about you steve what's your view on any view on them stories actually on the uh, the google glass because um i read the news story where there's some state here in america state laws where they're going to try to ban uh people from wearing google glasses while they're driving which makes kind of sense in some ways uh yeah. virginia is it virginia yeah, it's Virginia. Yeah, uh, and I, I could see maybe other states adopting that as well. All right, cool. What I just think it's interesting they're trying to ban it before it's even out. Yeah, <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Jody? What any other? What's your view on them stories? Oh, uh, I thought it was kind of curious that um, employers are using kittens to avoid cyber attacks, and I'm wondering why <laughs> they chose kittens instead of puppies. You know, I mean, we all celebrate Catter Day, yeah, but we don't have a. a yeah, we don't have a pupper day. We should that, so. well, you, should, you should start that up then, Jody. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, I was, I was in a conversation with someone earlier who uh, uh, this week that was talking about some social media thing, and they said there are three things, sex, kittens, and babies. Those are the three things that people click on the most. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. How do you click on Nice. That? <laughs> yes, please. How do you click on what? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> right. you have a new so you're, you're, you're spelling it wrong. It isn't C L I C K. I'll leave what it is. <laughs> <laughs> is that why? Um, yeah, keep going. Jody, what else you want to say? What else you want to say, Jody? No, no, no. That's what, that's that it? That it? Um, what about you, Keith? What's your view on them stories? Well, you know, I, I, I hate. Um, I don't think targeting is 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 ultimately going to fly as an advertising mechanism on mobile at all. And I think right now it's pretty transparent to the user when they're being targeted, which is kind of creepy to most users. And if you go and buy a pair of shoes at an online store in the U.S., for the next week you see the same pair of shoes showing up on every ad you see on your mobile phone or on the desktop. And it's, it's kind of totally weird. Uh, so I'm, I'm not convinced that Facebook's general approach here, which is targeted search, is a good idea. W Wi-Fi versus not Wi-Fi is just a detail, and I, and you know, I, I don't really care. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I, I think, I don't know what Facebook will announce any more than anyone else does. Yeah, they've they've said consistently that they're not going to build a phone, so that means they must be building a software stack. That developers c uh, 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 handsets can use, and HTC would appear to be the first adopter of that. If that is indeed what they've built, it would make sense because they've been breaking out all their apps. You know, the messenger app, the camera app, yep, um, and so on. That they've got a full deck of apps. Um, but I, I, you know, I don't really see Facebook and mobile being a natural fit. In fact, I think Facebook's more of a Web 2.0 company and the browser is its natural place. And it is it feels pretty unnatural on a phone that already has an address book yeah. to be using Facebook as your primary way of sharing and stuff. So I almost don't think it matters what they do. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on Keith. Who's, who's making that noise? Can you please mute your mic? We're trying to do a podcast here. Just mute. <laughs> It was sorry, a, that's me. Sarah. Just um, <laughs> phone off. Um, sorry, Keith, good government. So, so um, yeah, so I, you know, I, it feels to me as if Google and Apple are in such a strong pole position when it comes to mobile OSs that whatever Facebook does, it's going to be unnatural and probably not take off. All right. Good answer, mate. Um, Sarah, what's your view on them stories? You got any view on them stories? Um, yeah, I um, well, I'd have to say that I actually love using the the Facebook app, but um, I also um, wanted to comment on the Google Glasses, and I think that it was interesting. Um, there was this one Stanford PhD student that put together a website that 
um, compiled the same list that Google compiled for the winners of the Google Glass. And it was really interesting because there aren't really any big names on the winners of Google Glass, aside from Tim O'Reilly. And I thought that was interesting. Um, and I'm not really sure about this whole announcement of, you know, the new... I don't even really understand it. It's like a new... Mo it's like a new Droid Facebook app that's coming out. Oh, I, I mean, I already have... I mean, I, I use Droid. I already have the app on my phone. So I'm a bit confused about that. But... Um, and then I guess they also made another announcement that they're making some, they're making another headquarters in Menlo Park, I believe. Yep, that's correct. Interesting. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of cool. And also, um, in Australia now, you can actually make a vo uh, voice calls from the uh, Messenger app now, Andrew. Okay, interesting. Um, I was calling Jacob the other day on, on it, it was pretty cool. Jacob, you, you know about that. Yes, it was. It was um, pretty clear too, pretty good. Cool too. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like you got a FaceTime, but it's on Facebook. It's a vo it's a VoIP call, man. I know. Yeah. Um. All right, Jacob. You got any views on them stories? Me? Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. <laughs> well, uh, I was reading one earlier about um the mobile home button for for your phone for people that want to. Use Siri while they're driving. It's a little Bluetooth dongle. Interesting. That sounds good. Um, Billy, what about you? Cost crashes, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I have to agree with, with Keith that I think it's, it's interesting there's always been this rumor about a Facebook phone, but I've never understood why when, you know, you've got, what, three or four mobile OSs out there, and yeah, it's not its own OS. It's kind of like... Uh, like Amazon would make a Kindle phone, I guess I, you know, it, it, <clears throat> at least with Amazon it makes sense because they have all these other apps that they're doing that they've had for a while. It may maybe Facebook's trying to do the same, but it just seems weird. Yeah, I just don't understand why they would do it. I mean, it, it's such a huge R and D process for a phone, and you need to release a new one every six months or every year. It, it's surely just going to take. You know, effort away from what their their primary goal is, particularly when they've got such difficult, you know, or, or successful competitors that they'd need to deal with on the hardware. It just wouldn't make any sense. I, I think a lot of it's because they're very threatened by mobile. And if you think about the history of Facebook, it was built in in the last ten years when the primary means of accessing people and information was a was a browser on a desktop or a laptop. So they have this big infrastructure built in the cloud for a browser to consume. And as, as people uh, you know, uploaded their contacts to that and allowed Facebook to be the management interface to all of their relationships, suddenly, out of nowhere, mobile phones appear, smartphones appear, where, where people are texting and emailing a lot more than they're Facebooking. There, there's about 12 trillion messages a year sent by a text or email on mobile. There's only 360 billion messages on Facebook across all platforms. So the human race is speaking with its fingers. It's using text. It's using email on mobile about 40 to 50 times more often than anyone uses Facebook. And if Facebook can't get into that stream of communications, it's going to be history. So I think that, that you know Apple's iMessage and Google's Android uh, messaging client that goes along with its Google Plus client, uh, not to mention just plain old SMS and email, uh, are the enemy of Facebook. Well, don't so you think? I think, I think they've got no choice. Well, don't you think people still want to be able to, you know, connect in, in other ways? I mean, yeah, you can you can do it directly, but sometimes you can just got so many people, you know. Yeah. I do think that, but you know, people are. Is WhatsApp really big in Australia? Uh, no, not really. No. no. Okay. Is there anything like Line or Kakao Talk or, or WeChat or any of those things taken off? We pretty much just borrow whatever America's doing. Yeah, we use. Um, I mean, <laughs> an app called Message Me and stuff. That's, that's a good cool app. And also using another app called Glide on my iPhone. That's, an, that's another cool app to use. Oh, that's and a good one. Zarfo. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Zarfo. Yeah, don't forget the Zarfo app. Too, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if, if, you add, if you add together WhatsApp, WeChat, Line, Kakao Talk, 
you get to about two billion users. Oh yeah, it's definitely. Uh, and so Facebook's small compared to that. So something's happening. It's definitely not fake. There's something real happening. Users are doing stuff. Um, it's almost like Facebook is where you play a role in public, uh, uh, which you don't do all the time. And these other things are where you actually engage with intimate relationships with real people um, that you have to interact with many times a day. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but, you know, right. but that's okay. okay. I mean, it's, it's okay to be um, a certain niche or appeal to people for a certain reason. I don't think that... Facebook necessarily has to be all things to all people. And, and additionally, um, the inter integration of mobile with Facebook, to the extent that you use an app, I think that's fine. But for example, I got a message today that somebody tried to poke me with a video. And I purposefully did not download, I know, right? I purposefully did not download the poke portion or po po poke app okay. because I, I, I think it's ridiculous. So... I, and I don't really care to be poked that way. I just want to second that. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Kate. I, I, think one, I think one like paradigm that's really changed with the whole smartphone mobile industry, you know, development within the last few years is that it doesn't really necessarily matter whether it's a, a text message or an email, you know, or a Facebook message or a message me message. More or less, it's all the same. As long as you know how to use the phone and you, you have the applications downloaded, it doesn't really necessarily, to me, make make that much of a difference. Mm. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine what your contact list would be like on a Facebook phone if it had Facebook. all your Facebook friends on it? <laughs> Wait a minute, my phone already has all my Facebook friends. <laughs> oh, mine, wow. mine does too. All right, mine has, so I, mine has I've got, Facebook, I've got mine Twitter, and LinkedIn. I haven't touched mine yeah. yet. Mm. All right, okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, Andrew, who's the guest today, mate? We have Keith Tier from Just Me, which is a new app, a uh, messaging app actually, which Keith is going to have a bit of a chat to us about. Yep. And um, it, it's, it's quite an interesting one. I've had a bit of a look at it. They've just sort of started their beta at the moment. And it's kind of a, a platform that hopes to bring together a very vertical, uh, I guess, messaging around Facebook, around Twitter, and a, a sort of be the, the portal, I guess, for, for a whole heap of different social aspects around that uh, messaging. Keith, would you like to continue a bit further and talk to us about what you've been up to. Well, I can tell you what the idea is and I hope it's well enough executed that what you've seen bears some resemblance to what I describe. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, well, so, you know, the inspiration behind Just Me is that there's, there's been this massive shift from a hardware point of view to mobile devices. And usually when that's happened in the history of computing, it's led to very significant changes in software architecture as well. So, you know, from the mainframe to the desktop, from the desktop, uh, we went into the era of networking, from networking to the internet, from the internet to social, and now from social to mobile, which aren't kind of replacements for each other. It's more like a continuum. But as each one happens, usually the software companies that dominated the prior era don't dominate the subsequent era. And, and so mm -hmm. I, I, look, I look at um, mobile, and in particular, the changed architecture of, of uh, the network. You know, you could think of Web 2.0 as a hub and spoke network with big, uh, you know, cloud-based companies in the middle, and everybody joins and kind of is a spoke off of that hub. Whereas mobile is more like a grid. We, we've all got these phones. Uh, they've all got address books in them. Uh, they're all connected to each other by multiple means, voice, text, email, uh, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. But there's multiple ways this grid network kind of joins together. In a way, we're all, we've all got a network in our pocket with our phone and its address book. That is a network. And the, the, the smartphones taken as a whole are a network of networks. Um, with all kinds of connections between them. And that's a, a very, very different architecture to the Web 2.0 era. So Just Me is trying to build the social glue, 
that makes that grid network a single network of networks where people can uh, people can leverage all of the features of the phone, whether it's taking videos, taking pictures, uh, doing voice or audio recordings, um, uh, or, or simply just texting, uh, and, and can um, can turn that, uh, if you like, input into the phone from your life into um, stored messages that might be shared either with yourself, or kind of like an Evernote, uh, or with other people, like email and SMS do, uh, or with the whole world publicly, like you tend to do on Facebook and Twitter. So a single app that sits on top of the address book and thinks totally differently about what the marriage of mobile messaging and social means in a post-Web 2.0 world. That's, that's kind of high-level geek talk. <laughs> from, a uh, from a consumer point of view, there's all kinds of features you get because of the way, that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give a couple of examples, with just me, you can send a message. I send a message to my three boys and my wife um, that had pictures of the new office we got at work at just me. Um, what happens, their, their just me client uh, inherits that whole group that I created called family. So they get a message from their dad saying call, to a group called family and it's got pictures in from work. They can then do a message back without having to create the group. They just say, I'm going to send a message to family as well. And I get pictures back from them. So we have, if you like, viral group distribution from a single group creator to anyone who's a participant in the group where that becomes usable. You don't have to do what they do on Google Circles, which is create the groups ahead of time. You just have to send the message and you're done. You've got the group. The other feature you get really for free because of that way of thinking, you know, I, I'm a soccer coach and I coach kids and on a Saturday their parents show up and they all take pictures and they never share them because to share them, you know, someone will say, well, let's all join Shutterfly and upload them there or let's all join this other thing and no one ever does it. So with just me, because we've got this group, viral group distribution, one parent can take a picture of the game and send it to the other parents. The other pictures from the other parents are just sent as replies to the original message. And if there's 10 parents, at the end of the day, you've got pictures from 10 different people making up a single album that all 10 people have. Uh, it's almost like an email thread would be, except we've taken the, we take the media out of it and surface it as a single album. So there's, there's things you can do with this distributed grid network with all the power of the camera and the address book that, that would be very, very hard to do in a centralized network. That's probably uh, enough good, of a starting point. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 uh, good, um, good talk there, uh, Keith. When, when's, when's the app going to be in the app store, mate? Will you promise not to tell anyone if I tell you? Well, <laughs> I don't know like, when, you, when you say it because they're going to be listening to the podcast. It's going to be in the App Store on April the 17th. Sweet. All right. Good we'll stuff. We'll keep it a secret. Yeah, we will. <laughs> keep it a secret. We won't tell no one. Um, is it going to be a free app, mate? You have 130,000 followers and you don't have an app yet. That's amazing. I know. It's going to be a free app. It is going to be a free app. Um, there is going to be an advertising revenue stream okay. in, the, yep. in, uh, uh, in the public part of the app. There's a, Just Me has a public stream, a little bit like Twitter. The only difference being that it's got rich media, uh, you know, as part of the messages, and there's no limit on the number of words. But apart from that, it's Twitter-like in that it's public, cool. and you can follow people, and people can follow you, and you can comment and like things. Um, in that public area, <clears throat> every twentieth uh, message will ultimately be an ad, and that's how we're going to pay for the service. Um, so. Uh, I'm toying with the idea, and I'd love to know what you guys think, of offering a version of the app that doesn't have that, that you pay a small amount for annually, like a couple of bucks annually for. What, no ads, you know? No ads, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree. Do it. Yeah, I agree. Pay like a dollar for no ads. I, I hate when ads, ads in apps. may even be an in-app purchase, like you can subscribe yeah. to an ad-free version or something yeah, like that. I haven't figured it out yet, but I do believe there's a lot of people who don't want ads and will pay a little bit for not having ads. Yeah, no, I, I would think so too. What about no. you? you Free version, and then you know the, the paid version for a dollar for no ads or whatever. Yeah, exactly. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it should be something. And object. we are we giving away storage for free uh, because we take video as a media type. 
potentially that could be a lot of storage, and we're not charging for that. So it feels like you know there's something we should do other than charging for storage. Mm -hmm. Well, Andrew, you're in competition, mate, because uh, Andrew is actually doing an, an app, a Zafo app, as we speak. Andrew, what's your view on this? Um, yeah, I don't think we're in competition, to be honest. Uh, our, our, our platform and what we're trying to achieve is a, a fair bit different. But I've got a couple of questions. First, first, Keith, I really enjoy the fact that when you were talking about the soccer on a Saturday morning and the parents, it, it's really good to see an app that actually has some real, you know, real life focus rather than just creating something that's tech and cool. You've actually got something there that, you know, instantly there's a, you know, a market for it. There's someone who can use it. And I can really see that obviously not just with, with soccer, but with any organization. And, and the fact that when you create that group, that group is then sent on to the next person. That, that's one of the things I think is very frustrating with Google Plus and many other platforms. You have to go there and actually curate it yourself. And not everyone is, is someone who's a, you know, a curator or a content provider. So I think that's going to make life a whole lot easier and hopefully will make your app you know, a lot more virally, I guess, effective. Mm. Um, which is really cool. And just, just jumping onto the uh, branding side, so basically what you're doing is you're getting advertisers or brands to actually come on board and people can then choose which ones they follow. So for example, Coca-Cola, they click on follow and every 20th ad will be from Coke or one of the other ones that they follow. Uh, at this point, have you got advertisers and brands and so forth on board who are uh, already sort of doing that or is that just the model that you're looking at once you actually build up the user base? Well, we developed the idea with brands. It was developed with um, a guy called Mark Reed, who runs digital mm -hmm. for a big ad agency called WPP. Mm -hmm. So we didn't just kind of invent the idea of, of, of uh, following brands. I mean, in a way, it's very close, actually, to Facebook's being a fan idea, except because it's mobile, there's a specific way of doing it that's very mobile. We, we basically get you to add the brand to the address book, uh, uh, um, as, a, as a kind of an opt-in saying, I like this brand. You know, this is an airline I fly all the time. I want to get coupons from them for money off because I'll use them. Uh, this is the laptop I always buy when there's a new one. I want that company in the address book. So we use the address book as a kind of an opt-in. And that gives the brand the right to send you private messages, actually, not in the public stream, private. Um, the public stream is more of a catch-all where you can discover brands. And there, initially, there is no targeting at all. It's basically who's paying the most. And to answer your question, no, none of that will be there on day one. Um, I, I, I'm not a believer in trying to monetize initially, as long as you have an idea of how you will eventually, because I think the primary thing is to figure out there's going to be a lot wrong with Just Me, let's be honest. We've, we've got about 5,000 beta testers now, and in the two months we've been in beta, I think if you counted the pixels that we've changed, it's probably about 80% of the app has changed mm -hmm. due to user feedback. And the fundamental of the app is still exactly the same. It's just how we presented it has changed a lot. Um, and, and, and I don't expect that to stop anytime soon. So it doesn't make sense to try to monetize before you've really figured out what the users um, see, see the value in and what they don't see the value in and you've got to a point where you think you've figured it out and, and we're not there yet. Uh, I think we've got a thesis and it's a big idea and it's a promising thesis but it's totally unproven at this stage. All right, Jody, any questions for Keith? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have to say, Keith, I, I think that the concept of having a unified place where you can connect various social networks, you know, connect with your, your um, friends, is definitely something that's needed. Um, unfortunately, with so many different places where you can be between uh, Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and Quora, and I mean, there's just so many different places, and you have to check into each one individually. Having one place where you can do that would be dynamite. But I guess my concern is, and I'm curious what your what your thoughts are, or how you're addressing it. Um, I know that Facebook has made noise about closing down their information. Um, Twitter has also had its own conflicts with um, Google Plus, you know, cutting off the stream of information at, at times. And I'm wondering how you're you're dealing with that, or how you think that's going to pan out for you. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, um, you know, I characterize what's happening right now as reportalization. Uh, it's basically Twitter and Facebook attempting to own and control their own audiences and not allow anybody else 
to own or control the audience. So it's almost like back to Yahoo. Mm -hmm. uh, after the Web 2.0 mm -hmm. era, which was about the democratization of publishing, this is now about the re-centralization. And um, mm -hmm. I think it's mm -hmm. a big, I think they're very mistaken to do that. Uh, having said that, just me will not fall foul of it because we have not implemented either the Twitter or the Facebook API as our method of integration. What we've done is piggybacked on top of the Apple integration with Facebook and Twitter uh, in the case of the iPhone. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Android, uh, we've yet to determine how we're going to do it. So mm -hmm. for us not to be able to help the user post to Twitter and Facebook, those companies would have to not cut off us, but cut off Apple. Wow. Okay. Um, and, and, that, and, and so, I, I, now the other thing is, we're not doing anything that they would consider bad. Most of the apps that they've closed down, they claim, whatever we think about their claims, they claim that these apps are simply replicating Facebook uh, or Twitter functionality and um, uh, are kind of stealing or mining your friends list for the purposes of replacing Facebook. Um, and, and they do it through the, uh, the social graph um, uh, connection. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we don't do that at all. We, we, we do not take content from Facebook and put it into Just Me. Uh, if the user has used the features on the iPhone to synchronize their address book with Facebook and Twitter, we sit on top of that and, and, and we, are an e we are able to use it but we don't initiate it in any way. And we, elect, we let the user publish to Facebook and Twitter, but not take stuff out. The thinking there is that uh, the aggregation is a very kind of geeky concept, and most normal people don't have enough accounts on different services to justify needing to aggregate. And even if they did, they wouldn't know what aggregate was. So our, we took the approach that the way to satisfy the user is to centralize the publishing component to turn the phone into a single point of publishing to multiple publishing points. And if you do that, you have all the content because you're the source of it without ever needing to aggregate back in. And it, it, so it's very unlikely that Twitter and Facebook would want to stop you publishing into Twitter and Facebook. But they do want to stop you taking stuff out. So we, we built in such a way to be consistent with that world view, which we all might think that's a very closed you know, kind of old-fashioned worldview that is guarding the audience for Facebook or Twitter, but it is what they think, and they're not going to change. Interesting. Um, Very I interesting. Wanted to, I wanted to also make a just a comment regarding the, the pricing model, um, just something to, to think about, and that is that you mentioned about the storage and that you're giving away storage. I know um, some other applications, such as iCloud, um, will start out where they give you a certain amount of storage for free and then you get to a point like I know my Dropbox I uploaded a bunch of things in Dropbox and um, then it said hey you might want to do your pictures too and as soon as I did my pictures I hit that limit so I yeah. wound up um, subscribing and, and getting a larger version because I was already familiar with the service I already liked it and it just seemed like that was a natural thing to do it was you know reasonable so um, that may be a way to to look at um, expanding to a you know a subscri subscription type service. Um, yeah, mm. definitely. Just, I think that's a, that, that's a very open option for us. I mean, we we not on day one we're not charging because you know nobody's going to reach a five gig limit initially anyway. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to never charge. I must be honest. I would like it if we never have to charge. And if you think about revenue per user. Um, if the world I described where, you know, I'll, I'll use myself as an example, I, 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 um, I fly Virgin America and United a lot, I use Canon cameras, uh, there's about five or six local restaurants I love, I go to one movie theater with my kids, mm -hmm. uh, these are all, if I look at my email inbox, these are all the commercial emails that I don't consider to be spam because I actually want to hear from those people. Um, if I could take all of those and put them into just me and those brands would pay to deliver messages to the users who love them, my revenue per user could be enough to never have to charge the user for storage. 
I actually don't know if it will be right now. Mm, but it, mm. but theoretically, it could be. And if it was, I could then say the storage is free and unlimited, no charge. Um, so, so, so I'm, um, I'm somewhat open-minded, um, but with a preference for not charging for storage if I don't need to. All right, good answer. Keith, Sarah, any questions? Okay, we've got to move on. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm actually curious about what type of privacy um, agreement do you guys have with the, with the clients um, or whatever? Well, so there's three kinds of content in Just Me. There's what we call private content, which is very like Evernote. It's truly private, just to you, the individual, not shared mm -hmm. with anyone. Mm -hmm. Then there's shared content, <laughs> and by shared, it's more like email or text. It's with named individuals. You've sent a message to named individuals, one or many. And then there's public content, which you've chosen to publish for the world. In the case of the first two, we have absolutely zero rights to the content. It's owned by the user, for awesome. the user. Um, and we, uh, for the third one, we've... We want to put a Creative Commons license in place, which says it's owned by the user and it's hosted by Just.me. And there is a Creative Commons license allowing it to be reused with attribution uh, by a oh, third okay. party. And, and that would mean, you know, the public area, if it was used in Tahir Square in Egypt and there were pictures of the revolution, CNN could take those <laughs> without permission. But when they broadcast them, would have to say, this came from such and such a user on Just Not Me. All right. Good answer, okay. Keith. Um, Sarah, is your phone vibrating? Um, not at the moment. Uh, it was before. Just <laughs> yes, it was. Just turn the and um, next time, so. Keith, I also want to say you have a lovely Crunchbase profile. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, talking off. Uh, you know, you know I, I have special privileges there. My wife <laughs> is product manager at Crunchbase. Really? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I see you've actually got SV Angel, Google Ventures, True Ventures. You've you've got backing from a number of high end sort of um, you know venture houses over in uh, the valley. There, what what what's the secret in actually doing that? Like, um, it's 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 really good to see. Um, well, I tell you, it isn't easy. Uh, there's a lot of mythology about the valley and how much money there is washing around and how easy it is. And um, <laughs> my I am not young. I'm I'm getting on a bit, and I've done a lot of startups, and uh, some have raised money, and others haven't. And I can say, in every single case, it's very, very hard. Um, the valley right now is I call it Death Valley. Um, it, you know, there's that famous English poem: "Once more into the valley of death rode the ten thousand, mm -hmm. and the, mm -hmm. the ten thousand uh, are the startups that are in Y Combinator or five hundred startups or similar organizations." who can raise $15,000 for three months. Um, and then there's a, a kind of, after that, there's no afterlife. Then there's growth capital. The main VCs will jump in if you're successful, but not before. And there's a huge chasm between the incubation phase and the success phase, so there's a massive amount of death. It isn't really a serious A crunch, as people call it. It's much deeper than that. It's a structural problem in Silicon Valley, that there is no venture capital anymore. There's incubation or there's growth capital. That's it. All right. Um, um, so how I avoided that is there's a number of things I always do. The first is I only ever think of things that if they could be successful, could be massive. It doesn't mean they'll be successful. But if they could be successful, you're looking at you know, 2 billion users. And if you do that, you get the VC's attention because they think, well, he might be successful. What if he is? He's been successful before. He's fucked up as well. But what if he's, what if he's successful? What if this is one of the successes? It could be huge. Well, then you get them to open their checkbox a little bit. And it would be very hard for a new entrepreneur to do that. You have to have somewhat of a track record. They have to suspend disbelief and believe you might, you might put it off. I got about the first $550,000 I got based on that. And at that time, uh, when it was True Ventures, Google Ventures, Betaworks, Crunch Fund, and Silicon Valley Angel, when that happened, I had no employees. They were all moonlighting on their day jobs. 
and that money got them to give up their day jobs and join full time. It was only two other people. Um, then we built a prototype, which could never have been launched. It, it wasn't scalable in any way, but it kind of proved the concept. And that led Vinod Kosler in December of 2011 to put in $2 million as a, as a, as a we call it series seed, but it's, some t it's really a series A round, mm -hmm. legally speaking, but we call it series seed because it's a smaller A round. Um, so the total raise then was 2.75 million. And at that point we went from three people to over the next seven months to 14 people. Uh, two Android programmers, two iOS programmers, two backend, one uh, web, HTML5. If you go to prod.just.me, you can say, see the HTML5 version today. It's in the open. Cool. Um, and, um, and, a bo and their boss, Kevin Nielsen, who, who's the VP of engineering. And then Alex Komarov, who's the guy who lives in Melbourne. Uh, he, what part of he Melbourne is he in, Keith? He, the, the, say again? What part of Melbourne is he from? You know? Well, he's Russian, so he's only just moved there. His I wife think. is a cancer specialist working at one of the teaching hospitals there. Oh, wow. Okay. And so he followed her. Oh, nice. And he did the, and he did the uh, accordion app that Steve Jobs used in part to launch the iPad 1. Oh, so wow. He's, he's a oh, brilliant cool. designer. He's really, really hmm. good. We may have to get him on the podcast, Keith, maybe one day. Oh, yeah. He speaks good English as well, so you okay. still understand him. All right. um, he's just left for a holiday in Tasmania, so he's gone. Okay. Um, any, anyway, uh, those guys, uh, you know, hired their people, and in Ju July 2012, we started building the final production code for the whole thing. And if you look at the app, those of you who have used the app, you'll know it's, it's not a single feature app. It's, it's a full messaging and social client for mobile, like, just like Facebook is for the web. This is a full-on client for mobile for, for social and it uses your address book so it gives all the control to the user over who gets to see everything. Cool. It, cool. Um, uh, so it never makes that decision for the user. I, I have a quick question. This, um, do you consider Path one of your competitors? Not really. I, I think of Path as um, being really great for one thing which is choosing a bunch of friends and then sharing everything with all of them every time. It's really good for that. But um, just not me, we don't even have that. The idea of sharing everything with everyone in your address book is kind of nuts because your plumber's in there as well as your wife. Um, <laughs> so we don't have share everything with everybody always. Okay. Uh, we have save it for yourself. That's one option. Two, tell us who to send it to and we'll send it to them and we'll make a group so you can reuse it later. Or three, publish it. Let everyone, let everyone see it in the world. Not just people in your address book, but everyone. Uh, so it's in, in a way, Path and Just Me are similar because design-wise, they're both very aesthetically pleasing. I, I hope we're in the same ballpark as Path because I think they've done a great job. Yeah, Path's great. I use Path all the time. Uh, but, Jacob, um, any questions for Keith? We, we have to really move on because it's only coming to the end of the podcast. So, Jacob, be quick, mate. Yeah, I was just... Well, no, when, when did you get the idea to start Just Me? That's a, that's a wonderful question, and it's a, kind of a bit of a sad answer. Um, <laughs> my mum passed away two Januarys ago. Please me. And, uh, okay. and my mum's husband was a photographer, and he passed away about nine months ago. And when my mum passed away, all these photos were on their computer at home. And when he passed away, my sister got the computer. And it was as if, like, when, when their physical lives ended, there was no digital record of their existence. And I'm, I'm a Star Trek fan of many years. And I remember, you know, Captain Kirk saying, Captain's Log, star date 27.9. Um, and um, say, being able to record everything that happened on the, on the Starship Enterprise. And I suddenly thought, you know, the iPhone has the ability to, when you want to, capture everything that goes on in your life. But nobody, nobody's sufficiently invested in building memories to remember to do that all the time. So I, I said, okay, what if we married something you do every day, messaging, with a cloud store 
that saves it all so you can look at it, back at it later. And uh, then when someone passes away, they, their life still is re record, re you know, you can go and look at their life. Of course, you have to give them a way to uh, pass on that content to the other people when they pass away and all stuff like that, but it's, that's easy to do. So the, the, uh, the original inspiration was um, thinking that somebody's life shouldn't just um, not be vi viewable after they've passed away. There was a movie like that with Robin Williams in it. <laughs> yeah, that was a that's good movie. Yeah, that was good. Um, hey, so quick question. Is the content only uh, consumable via the mobile app, or is there also going to be a web interface, or is there going to be something for people who are on desktop computers? There is already a web interface, HTTP prod, P-R-O-D dot just dot me. And we intend to make our API public so that other apps will be able to pull the data in if you, the user, wants the app to. Or other apps will be able to add data to the Just Me Cloud if you want the app to. All right. Um, just, just quickly, um, Keith. Yeah, uh, quick question, Keith. <laughs> question. Um, how often does Justin Bieber use the website? <laughs> <laughs> So far as I so, so far as I know, he's never used it so far. Uh, and no, we, don't. Yeah, crazy question, Sarah. But like, hey. we don't believe in censorship, but we're actually banning him. <laughs> oh, I might sign up. <laughs> yeah. um, can you tell us about the the um, the show you're you're on, the the Gilmore Gang, each Friday. Uh, the Gilmore Gang is Steve Gilmore's show. Steve yep. is a very well-known journalist for many years, mm -hmm. uh, but he's not just a journalist. He's really a very He's a thought leader. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's a great analyst of what's going on and what's coming next. And he, he has a show every Friday for just over an hour called The Gilmore Gang. He selects a whole bunch of different people to, show, to come on the show. I, I'm often on it, not, not always. Um, and um, it's really a conversation about what's coming next. Cool, cool. What's, the, what's your view on Robert Scable going to Android from Apple? It won't <laughs> last. He it won't, won't last. last. Won't last. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I agree. The first time, the first time he walks down the street wearing Google glasses, and um, <laughs> you know, walks into a lamppost by accident, he'll mm -hmm. he'll slip back. Keith, Keith, what are your thoughts on Message Me? It's probably got some similarities I love that to, app. to what you're actually great. doing. Great, but I think it's great that the amount of adoption that they've actually had with their platform probably is very promising for what you're doing. I think. Yeah, I think of I you know I must say first of all I've only just used Message Me very very briefly, um, so I, I don't want to claim to be an expert on all the features yet. There's probably features I haven't used, um, but I think of it as being part of a family of apps that are what I think of as chat centric. They take the instant messaging kind of UI and then work with that uh, to allow you to chat and share. So I think it's very much focused on um, you know of the moment interactions that have to happen right now and need to be more or less real time. Uh, Just Me is a superset of that. We can do real time text messaging back and forth with video and stuff, uh, but we are more focused on also being able to replace email for all your most intimate relationships with either colleagues or friends or family, not just replacing text messaging. So the, that's probably the difference. I think we're a superset. We also have a, a richer social layer um, with commenting and liking and, um, and then a richer memory store, looking back afterwards and seeing what you did with shared albums and all that. Good stuff, Keith. Um, now, Keith, we need, we, need, we need to wrap up this podcast. Steve, do you want to say anything before we go, mate? Um, uh, yeah, real quick. Um, I, I noticed, uh, well... One of the questions in the, in the chat room too, and and I, I thought of it as well, that um, yep. we have all these social networking coming into this app, and but can you, um, instead of when you send a message, you can send it to specific users or or um, like to face just to Facebook or just to Twitter or something like that. I think you answered yes. it before, but yeah. Well, so the answer is yes. It's very selective. You can do whatever you want, actually. It, it, it's meant to serve you rather than force you to work like the software. So if you know what you want to do, you can actually do it with just me. If it's a message to five people, by the way, they don't have to have the app either. You, you, can, you can pick two guys with cell phone numbers 
and three people with email addresses and one who has the Just Me app, that will form a group. Uh, three of them will get a text message with a link in. Three of them will get an email with, with the full message in. And one of them will get a Just Me message. So that's the other difference to all of the other messaging apps. They, they require the receiver to have the app. We do not. The receiver just needs to have either email or SMS. Oh, sweet. All right, Keith. So um, it's going to be out on April 17th. Is that correct? Yep. Uh, uh, that's in, that's uh, Pacific time, so probably the 18th, your time. <laughs> it's going to be in Australia too. Is that correct, mate? I hope so. It, it, it is going to be in Australia. In fact, we've translated it into Australian. Oh, well, good. I <laughs> <laughs> wow. can't wait to use it. It's going to be a fantastic app. Um, Andrew, what do you want to say before we go? Where can you get on Twitter and stuff? Uh, you can get me at azafa.com forward slash at Andrew, facebook.com forward slash Ari from Oz, and twitter.com forward slash Ari from Oz. Good stuff. Uh, what's oh, oh hey, 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 one other thing. Oh, hey, Kev. I forgot. Just yep. in case your listeners are in other countries, yes. we're actually launching in 155 countries and 30 wow. three, zero, three zero languages the same day. Wow, good stuff. Wow. wow. Hmm. What does Robert Scapel think about your app? I don't know because um, it's a long time since he saw it. Last time I talked to him, he loved it, but it's changed a lot since then, so I need to reconnect with him. Yeah, definitely. Get him onto it. Um, Steve, where, where, can, where can they get you? Uh, you can get me on uh, Twitter at chatterbox underscore live and then justin.tv forward slash Linux cool dude. And Jody, what do I want to say before you go? Um, what do I want to say? First of all, Keith, fascinating. I really appreciate your coming on the show. Learned a lot from you today. Thank you so much. Wow, and that's um, nice. well, seriously, it was a pleasure to listen and and good stuff. All good. Uh, it um, wasn't for me, Jody. You wouldn't be talking to him. It's true, <laughs> and, Brad. You know we love you. <laughs> and uh, Keith, where can I get you at uh, on 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 the internet and stuff, mate? I am almost everywhere. K T E R K T E A R E on right. Twitter, on Skype, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. All right, good stuff, Sarah. Where, where can I get you? Um, Sarah Slocum at Twitter or on Facebook or I love social media Inc. Um, likewise on Facebook and Twitter. Good stuff. You can get me on Twitter, Brad Oz, and a tech webcast. Uh, Jacob. You can follow me at jazzbot36691 z right, And tell them about the Tech Cluster episode we did the other day too, man. Oh. Jacob? With Tom, Mar with Tom Mariello. Yeah, tell them tell what happened. Oh, basically, he he does a good show with forensics. He does great, great chatting with that guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. Chatting. You know, you know that guy, Jody? Yeah. Oh, you do know him? Who? I'm sorry. Tom. What's his name? Jacob. Tom Mariello. Um, no, I'm sorry, I don't. All right. Um, Billy, where can you on Twitter? Uh, they could find me at that iPad guy on Twitter, Facebook, and everything. And I had a quick question for Keith. I signed up for the beta. How long until uh, you get in? Oh, here's 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 a present for all of you. You can, it, you can do it right now on your iPhone in Safari. Just dot me slash get the app or one word. All right, go get it. Oh, oh, oh boo! I have a Galaxy. <laughs> Uh, there is an Android version, but it's way it's about two months behind the iPhone version, so you you don't want to use it yet. Sarah, it's, you need an iPhone. Okay. okay, I'm getting it right now. Get an iPhone, it's, Sarah. So slash get the so, app. I love Just my guy. Slash get the app. Get the app. Yep. Yep. Um, all right, Andrew, I'm catching up on Wednesday. May is that correct? Um, indeed, looking forward to it. You're coming out to our new Zafo.com offices in Richmond on Wednesday. We'll give you a bit of a look around and catch up for lunch. We have cake. I can get cake. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> um, Jacob, what do you want to say about the iPad Mini before we go? It's effing awesome. Thanks, where you idiot. <laughs> I, I didn't say the real thing. Join Will, Eric, and myself as we bring you the latest, most up to date. Thank you, Brad. You from Australia and the world. A weekly podcast available each Friday through iTunes. Watch the live stream recording of the show at live.thesecrethub.com each Thursday night, 7 30 p.m. or GMT plus 10. Call in live via Skype or chat in our lounge. However, you get us, just make sure you do. Listen or visit our website for more information www.aussietechhead.com.au. You. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's longest <laughs> running tech news podcast. And uh big thank you to Keith for coming on, Keith. Appreciate, appreciate your time, mate. 
You're welcome. It was fun. And I'm going to go and be with my kids now. Good to have fun, mate. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, 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 Thanks a whole lot. Thanks. Thank you, Kate. Yeah. That was fantastic. Thank, Thank everyone. you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Good night. Well, that's it for Tech Webcast this week. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed having your mind expanded. Tune in next week for more Tech Talk with Brad, Jason, and whatever crazy guests they've managed to rope in. Don't forget to get the Tech Webcast app from iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at Tech Webcast. And of course, check us out on Facebook too. Until next time, may the tech be with you. Peace.